All right, so this one's kind of a rare one for me to pick up. Um, this one actually runs really good. Um, the only issue with it, that's like the main issue with it, is that the 4x4 doesn't work. So I got this thing for super cheap because of that reason. And uh, the guy gave me um, another bike too, that one over there. So I got two of them for a really, really good price. Paid $750 for this thing. And it's 4x4, 400cc. Typically these go for right around fifteen to 2000 depending on condition. Um, you've, you've seen me own a couple of these in the past. And usually they're pretty reliable machines as long as you pre-mix them and don't rely on the oil pump. The oil pump on these typically go out and then blow up the whole engine and then you're stuck with rebuilding it and all that fun stuff. So um, the guy pre-mixed this one and he said that he doesn't know if the oil pump works. So we'll have to check all that stuff out today. He said the only problem with it is the lights don't work and the 4x4 does not work. So that's why I got it so cheap. And I was looking at this thing and it looks like down here, the wires are just disconnected for the 4x4. And when I was riding this thing, I felt like one wheel was getting power to it. And the way these 4x4s work on the Polaris is, is that there's a magnet in there that pulls a plate in and then connects the 4x4. And um, if that magnet isn't working, it won't work with the 4x4. So you need power going to the plate down there. And if you're not getting power, your 4x4 is not going to work. So this is the power going down to that plate. And if those wires are cut, obviously this is not going to get um, any 4x4 action. So I think that is the problem. And that's basically why I bought it. Because I'm like, okay, that's got to be an easy fix, I would think. Um, so we'll see. We'll take up this wheel today and try to figure that out. And then we'll try to figure out the lights too. Because right now, you turn this thing on. It looks like the neutral light isn't working. So the neutral light should come on right there. Neutral light isn't working. If you turn on the lights right here, all the way to high, you've got nothing. And we've got no low lights either. Turn it to low, nothing. So for some reason the lights aren't working. Um, I believe the back light does work, I think. I guess we could start it up and see. Tail light is not working either, so all the lights don't work. And this thing definitely needs a transmission oil change, which is right here. So let's quick check that out too to make sure that's good. But uh, one thing that works on this, which is very surprising, is the back brake. So back brake works well, and front brake works well. So both brakes work, that's super rare <laughs> on a Polaris. Usually the back brake never works on these things, so pretty happy about that. And the tires aren't that bad. Not all dry rotted or anything. So they hold air, they're decent, and it even comes with some dog poop from the previous owner, so that's good. But yeah, not a bad looking machine. Um, last registered in 2022. So the guy said he used to take this thing up north and rip it around the trails, and he said he never had any problems with it. So we'll see. Let's uh, start by digging into the seat. Just check everything out. Air filter, all that fun stuff. This was sitting outside underneath the tarp. Let's see what she looks like. This thing should pop right off of here. Even has the foam up there, wow. Seat's in nice condition, no rips in the seat. It actually clean up pretty good. Take these guys off. Oh, that one's down there. We need some penetrating oil. What do you guys think? There's a mouse living in here? Find out here in about five seconds. Let's see. 
you guys think? That looks pretty good. We're off to a really good start here. <laughs> Air filters in there. Doesn't look horrible. There's some stuff right there I want to clean out. A little debris, but wow. Man. And then check this out. What is that? An old toolkit for this thing from 1994. <laughs> that's pretty sweet. Let's, let's check that out. That's worth checking out. I think it comes up this way. Wow. I don't think that's ever been opened. That's crazy. That's awesome. Let's clean that up and then uh, check that out. See what kind of tools are in there. It feels like I'm opening some type of like rare uh, collecting card right here. Where it's like, <laughs> you don't see it very often and you don't want to wreck it. Kind of what this feels like. Alright, shall we open it? Let's see what we've got on the inside. Look at that. A rusty screwdriver. Spark plug remover. A little bag. That's empty. Just hoping we're gonna find some money in this thing. We've got the uh, got the tire gauge. We've got a wrench, 12 millimeter and 10 millimeter, the only ones you need in life, and then uh, a spark plug. <laughs> so that's a good toolkit. Um, I'm not sure if that's factory, but. That's all the useful tools that you need for this thing. That's good. That was kind of a letdown. I was expecting some more Polaris tools in there, but still cool to have the original case and everything for it. All right, just gonna blow up the air filter here quick. See if there's any stuff that comes out of it. Oh yeah. Hmm. All right, that's pretty clean now, but uh, there's a lot of stuff in there that came out. All right, air filter is uh, back in, all cleaned up. This might be the only four-wheeler I've ever picked up before that does not need a carb clean. It runs perfect, so I'm not gonna mess with the carburetor. Why take it out and clean it if it runs good? Wouldn't make sense, so let's just check out what's back here. Oh, there's something in there. Kind of afraid to put my hand down there. Oh, it's just a cap for the front, it looks like. So this, I think, goes up here for the, uh, the coolant. Any cooling in there? Oh, yeah, it topped off. Awesome. That's a good sign. Cool. Now let's check the transmission oil, which is right here. I think this thing has a magnet on the end of it. Like much oil in there. I think that's supposed to be all the way filled up. Hmm, that's not good. We definitely need to change that out. All right, so looking at this a little bit closer, I took a flashlight and looked down here. Let's take a look together here. It looks like there's actually fluid in there. It's just not very high up. You can see it kind of in there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. There's definitely fluid in there. 
I don't see it. That's fluid in there, it's just not all the way up. And then the drain plug for this thing. I found it on the side here. It's right there. That big bolt. So you'd have to take off the skid plate to get to that, but there's the drain bolt for the trans. And then the fill plug, you can just fill it in this spot right here, in that hole. So we'll do that a little bit later, but at least there's fluid in there already. And it looks pretty clear. So maybe we'll just top that off. Might not even have to drain it. And there was no metal shavings on it or anything, so that should be good. Um, let's start working on the 4x4. That is the main problem with this thing, so let's try to get that fixed next. Alright, first things first, let's get this left wheel off, front wheel. that we saw was cut was right here. Where does that go to? Ah, I can see it right here. It goes right into there. You can see the wires coming through right there. Into. Looks like it just got cut out. Let's not go there. There. All right. All right. Those are the two wires right there. So peel a little bit more of this foam out of the way, and then we're gonna kind of try to solder those together with the ones from over here. I don't know how those broke off, but these are gonna connect like that. We're gonna try to get these stripped off here. There's that one. And then we're going to try to solder those to these two down here that they already stripped off. And we need to get some heat shrink on there so that I can cover it up once it's done. Alright, we're just going to solder these two together. You can see I wrapped them together. So we're just waiting for the heat gun to heat up. Then we should be good to go. Let's see here. Oh yeah. Looks pretty good. All right, then we'll do the other one. All right, that's all repaired. Put back into that little groove right here, and then I put a zip tie so that doesn't move. So that should be fixed. We'll have to test it out a little bit later. All right, let's try to take off all these plastics so we can get to the lights. All right, it looks like we've got power to the light right here. We've got the machine on, we've got it on high. And I've got 12.2 volts going to it, so I'm guessing the bulb is blowing in that one. I'm guessing the bulbs are all blown. And that typically happens when you run the machine without a battery. So I'm guessing that's kind of what happened. We'll take a look in here and uh, see what kind of bulb that takes. 
See if we can change it out. I've got a couple bulbs we can try, but. These things come off of here. Don't think you have to take them all the way out. This one, I think you do. That should just pop free here. Maybe I'll just take this one all the way out. <laughs> there we go. That worked. And that whole unit should come out. And that one is supposed to be connected to that one right there. You can see where that low one broke. It's supposed to be connected over here. So that's a bummer. Let's just play around with this and see if we can get the other one to light up here. All right, so just playing around with the light bulb to see if we can get part of it to light up. And it looks like, not that one. There, that one lights up. So it's this one and this one. This one doesn't do anything. All right, let's see what happens. We've got the machine on, turn it to high. That's working. All right, let's check out the low light bulbs in here. See what's going on. Oh. Yeah, those are blown out. You can see filament is uh, gone. It's supposed to cross that bridge right there, and it's gone, so it needs new bulbs, it looks like. It looks like the tail light was completely missing the bulb. One here that we can try out. I don't think it's going to work, but we'll try it. There we go. Let's just see if that turns on. I don't think it will. It doesn't have the double. Oh, there we go. That works. Cool. All right, let's fill this up a little bit more. We're gonna fill it up just a tad more. Stick the funnel in there. And we're just gonna put a little bit and then check it with the dipstick. And keep on doing that. I don't think we're up quite a way. Still need a little bit more. A little bit low. Let's see. Yeah, you can see oil on it now. So. We're gonna call that good right there. We mix the gas 41. Let's get that going. All right, it looks like four by four is working. Um, I don't get that jerking anymore to one side when you take off. So 
I guess without further ado, let's, let's go get this thing a pressure washing and then go take it for a ride. Stay tuned, we'll see if that 4x4 works. All right, if this is in fact fixed, I think the 4x4 um, soldering those wires probably took me about seven minutes and then um, the lights only took me a couple minutes to do. So we pretty much found the solution to the lights right away because we just measured the voltage to that. We knew we were getting voltage, so obviously it was the bulb and uh, the 4x4 was just the two cut wires. So this thing probably took a total of 10 minutes to fix. All right, just pressure wash this thing. Running really good. No issues yet. Let's throw the GoPro on and take it for a long ride. All right, let's see what she does. So far, it's not pulling to one side like it was before with the 4x4 on. So I'm thinking the 4x4 is fixed on it. So soldering those two wires together seemed to fix it. Speedo works I saw, so that's good. And the mileage on it is only 2515, so 2515 miles, not bad. So that's why it probably <laughs> runs so well. A uh, low mileage machine here. And uh, we pressure wash it off, it looks really nice. Really, really nice. It's a mint machine for 1994. All the plastics are like perfect condition. Crazy. All right, <laughs> one bad thing I did do was my choke lever ripped off when I was trying to put the plastics on. So I ordered up a new choke lever for it, but other than that, she's she's pretty mint. Starts right up without the choke, so don't even really need that. So much gas we've got in there. We've got enough for a little ride here. The lights are still working, everything's working great on it so far. Look at the pickup on this thing, pretty good. Pretty good for an old machine. It's running great. This is probably the best one I've had um, of this model. On 30, 35, 40, against the wind here, 45, 50, <laughs> it's pretty good. Woo. Is it windy out today? Do a little trail ride in here. be wet through here. <laughs> oh, 
thing's nice though. Really smooth. Ooh, it's a little wet. Yeah, the 4x4 is working. Pulled right through that mud hole. Suspension's not bad on this thing either. I'm not feeling too many bumps. And usually through here it's really bumpy. You can see it's starting to get bumpy now. All these big roots from the trees are growing through. Seven right there. <gasps> Pretty good. Woo, a little muddy. Probably should have pressure washed it after the ride. Wasn't really thinking there. Looks like it's pretty muddy through there. See if she can go through it. No problem. That's a big I'll try her. Oh yeah, like nothing. <laughs> Sweet. all wet through here. Yeah, 4x4 four four is 100% working. We would be getting stuck instantly through here. No problem. This thing's sweet. I might have to keep this thing. This thing's really nice. Goes through anything. That was deep. That was up to the footrest. So, this thing's pretty awesome. So far, I'm liking it. So, that's pretty sweet no oh, I can hear the fan coming on so fans working that's good let that cool down for a little bit oh boy <laughs> wet through there <laughs> Burned my leg.
Haven't been back here in a long time. Watching out for any logs in the way. Don't want to go too fast through here. Doesn't look like it's been cut in a while. We're definitely getting soaked here. Oh, that was the path, I think. Let's see if we can get back, see if we have enough gas here. Oh, that's a deep one. running great. This thing's running perfectly. It's awesome. Looks like it needs another cleaning, but other than that, she runs perfect. All right, made it back home. We're just waiting on the uh, the choke cable and then the headlights and then this thing will be completely done, ready to go, perfect condition. And um, yeah, four by four is working good. We fixed that. Um, all the brakes work, starts right up easily and um, goes really fast. I think we topped out at like 55 maybe. So it goes pretty fast for a uh, four by four four wheeler. But yeah, that was a quick fix. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. This one we got pretty lucky on. Usually these things have a ton more problems, but uh, it was just the 4x4 and the lights, like the guy said. So, anyway guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next one. We've got a lot more projects coming up. You can see, 
So until next time, we are out.